My name is Jimmy Reyes and I'm a comic book illustrator. Welcome to my channel where I share tips, techniques, and an inside look at being a freelance comic book illustrator. The title of this video is Traditionally Inking Digitally. <laughs> it's a little confusing. Um, let me go ahead and explain why I titled this video Traditionally Inking Digitally. Is that because I have a background as a traditional inker, meaning that I would actually ink with India ink using pen nibs and a brush onto paper. I have moved on now to digitally inking where I no longer have India ink or paper. The image is sent to me digitally. I use a computer program called Clip Studio Paint. And I started using Clip Studio Paint about a week ago. And so what I'm showing now on the screen is the work that I have done within that week and all that I have learned. I'm spending about eight hours a day um, for a week just working in the program, learning to control and how to manipulate the tools that are provided within Clip Studio Paint. Now I am using a brush that, um, or it's actually called a G-Pen. And this G-Pen was purchased from Ram Studios, which is uh, Robert uh, Mazzullo. I, I forget how to pronounce his last name, but uh, he has a YouTube channel. And uh, we'll place a link in the description to his YouTube channel. If you guys get a chance, visit it. He actually has a lot of tutorials uh, and tips in Clip Studio Paint and how to ink digitally. So I watched a few of his videos uh, to get an idea about Clip Studio Paint and, and then I started watching every video that I could on Clip Studio Paint. Some were good, some were helpful, some uh, provided me with some information, but um, not very many of them had an approach to their inking style with a traditional inking technique. So what I decided that I wanted to do is I wanted to be able to do everything that I can do traditionally, but I want to do it digitally. I want to use the tools that are provided within Clip Studio Paint, minus the fact that I did uh, purchase a brush from uh, Robert Mazzullo that uh, he designed and created his own. And we get an interruption here from uh, my beautiful girlfriend. She uh, pops in my text message pop up on my computer and she gives me the smiley face with the cool shades on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so back to where you see the little circle. That's where I'm going to start inking. Now, I went ahead and, and got this brush uh, and our G pen, and it's a digital G pen, and uh, he has it for sale. And I believe it was only two dollars. It wasn't very much uh, at all, and um, so I, I bought it and I didn't use it. I started working with the G pen that was provided within Clip Studio Paint. Started really. Uh, developing a, a feel for it really started to enjoy and like the line work that I was getting from this uh, standard G pen and I started making adjustments myself and then I decided I was going to use Robert's uh, G pen found that I, I liked his even more he, he had all the settings that what I was doing and the way that I was adjusting my G pen was already done uh, in his G pen and then I can make additional um, pressure pin pressure adjustments to his pin that worked for my hand gestures and the way that I throw my lines so that's what I'm using and I, I adjusted his pin uh, specifically for me not adjusting uh, any of the settings within his pin so I began using that and I realized uh, very quickly that uh, I have to ink it traditionally because that is the way that I've been trained and the way that I've learned. So with traditional inking techniques, um, I found right away that it gave me an advantage. I could come right in and start inking. All I had to do was get adjusted to the pin pressure and the way that this G pin reacted to my hand gestures. Um, and so once I got a feel for it, then I, I could go in and ink the way I do traditionally. And I, I feel that that's what you should do. You should approach it traditionally, even though it's digital inking. You aren't going to instantly become 
a fantastic digital inker. It's not magic. This, this program does help you throw a clean line. So if you have shaky lines with the quill and you're unable to control a physical brush, you know, Kalinsky brush, well, the computer program is going to give you straight lines, beautifully feathered lines. So, you know, anybody can throw these straight lines. But can anyone ink? Now that's the question. And, and I was watching Robert Mazzullo, uh, or Roberts, I don't want to say his last name because I don't want to mutilize his, his last name. Um, <laughs> so Robert, if you're watching, I'm sorry if I tore up your last name. But um, So I watched his video and he mentions as well that you're not instantly going to become this magnificent digital inker. You know, Clip Studio Paint is not going to make you Scott Williams. You know, you're not going to be this you know, super clean, you know, inker or like Sandra Hope or something, but um, it is going to help you throw very clean lines, but you still have to learn inking techniques. And, and that's what I'm getting at. And I knew, I know I took a long route, a long way to get to it, um, but I really want to emphasize that you still have to learn inking techniques. You have to learn when and where to place your thick lines, when to place thin lines, when to break lines. You know, rendering is very important to your line work. Uh, you definitely want to learn, you know, uh, shapes, uh, you know, uh, how to break from blacks, how to transition into white. Uh, so you really want to learn all different types of line work. And I say line work over and over because that's what inking is. It's line work. You have to learn how to use line work to create what a penciler has created with a gradient pencil because you even though it's digital it is still black and white you are still working with line work to create the effect of a gradient to uh, create the effect of transition from solid black to white so there's a lot of inking techniques this video is, isn't um, about inking in clip studio paint uh, i'm not going to create a tutorial just yet on Clip Studio Paint. I'm not going to actually show an actual demo yet because I don't feel I have a total grasp on Clip Studio Paint. There's still so much more that I want to learn. I have learned a lot within this last week. And so the more time you spend on it, the more you will learn as well. And I just wanted to show what uh, I'm able to do within Clip Studio Paint. So maybe this could be an inspiration if you've thought about transitioning into digital or if you've tried digital briefly and said, you know, oh, I can't get it to work. Or maybe uh, if you're unsure if digital can give you the type of line work that you would get traditionally, uh, I believe the answer is yes. I believe you, you can. And I believe that this is where the future is headed. Inking is going to move and transition into digitally. We always have the option of inking traditionally. I haven't lost my traditional inking ability. It is still there and digital has just added on to my creative arsenal. So now it's an extra tool that I have. So when someone needs digital inking, I can now provide that. Um, I honestly want to stick 100% with digital, but if someone says, hey, I want it inked traditionally and I want to be able to have an original piece for it, no problem. I, I can do that. Um, so it's, it's beneficial, you know, for me. I, I really don't see any downsides. Some people debate and say, oh, well, digitally, you're not going to have an original. But when I go to comic book conventions, I see people selling prints all over the place. I rarely see anybody selling originals at a comic convention. So, you know, yes, you have to sell more prints. They're, they're less. But people are more likely to buy prints because they're, you know, on, most people are on a budget or, you know, because it's within, uh, you know, the price range that they're looking for. And uh, so they're more likely to buy that, I, I think. So it, you can have your debates and think, you know, um, you know, which is better. I can't tell you which I think is better for you. It's a decision that you have to make uh, personally, you know, as an individual and as an artist, you know, what it is that you're looking for. Um, but as for me, I, I really don't mind not having the original uh, because I do want very clean line work. I want my pencilers happy with the work that I provide. Um, I want to give them the best quality work that I can give, and I believe that that is done digitally. Uh, so if you are following along and you're watching the video here, and you can kind of see um, that I am rotating my page quite a bit because I'm treating it exactly the way I would traditionally. 
traditionally I spin that page, I rotate it, I am right-handed. So I'm using my left hand and I am rotating that page and I throw my line um, with my right hand. That's mostly what um, I ink with is a nib. Um, so uh, that's how I, I ink traditionally. So I approach digitally the exact same way. Rotate the page, throw my line, rotate the page, throw my line, um, you know, things uh, like that. And the great thing about digital is that if you throw that line and that first line doesn't work out for you, undo, throw that line again. It's not a problem at all, you know, or when you zoom out, because I do zoom out quite often to see the artwork, you know, to be able to step back and look at it. It's the exact same technique I use when I'm making traditionally. I would get up from my drafting table, stand up and look down the page, take a second to absorb everything and analyze what I have done and um, then approach the page inking again based on what I've seen by taking an outside look. So I do the exact same thing digitally, zoom in, zoom out, uh, and then I go in and I rotate, and as I said, I, I throw my lines. Uh, if the lines aren't spaced properly or if the lines are just a little crooked, um, they don't create that transition that I want, I use the lasso tool, select, delete, and I do it again. And it is done pretty fast, very quickly, digitally, uh, all the edits are done. If you'd like to be able to keep up and see where I'm at digitally, follow me on Twitter. My Twitter account is going to be at the end of this video, and you will be able to see all the updates that I have, all the stuff that I have shown before this video, at the beginning of the video, I should say. I have shown previews of that. Uh, they've all been on Twitter. And if you're not a subscriber, subscribe to this channel because eventually I am going to start making inking demos where I'm going to show you the tools and how I use the tool, um, how I select my layers and, and the way that I ink. And then eventually I will give a tutorial once I feel that I'm up to at least uh, an advanced level at Clip Studio Paint. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Sorry this video didn't have any editing. And don't forget, you can follow me on Twitter.